fuck. So I finally got around to watching Doom Patrol Season 2, and to be honest, I fucking loved every goddamn minute of it. I hit play and... Holy shit, these credits are phenomenal. Spoilers for all Doom Patrol Season 2 and a bit of Season 1. The show starts off where Season 1 left off, everyone except Larry being miniaturized. Larry's trying to find a way to get everyone back to a normal size. Meanwhile, everyone is pissed at Niles for all the shit he caused and did to them. Everyone is on edge. Jane is on drugs, Cliff's killing rats, Rita is trying to control her powers, and Cyborg is dealing with PTSD. Also, Niles is forced to trade his immortality necklace to magic them all back to normal size. Throughout the rest of the season, we see everyone dealing with their hardships. Jane is dealing with the other personalities trying to take her control away. Cliff is trying to reconnect with his daughter by telling her the truth. I'm your father. Excuse me? Okay. See, some batshit crazy scientist caused our car crash so he could stick my brain in this piece of shit body. He told me you were dead all this time. Then I found out you weren't. Now here I am. Okay? We good? Rita deals with her mother, convincing the producers to give her roles. So Rita tries to get a role herself without anyone's help. Niles is dying. And Niles' daughter, Dorothy, is trying to keep her imaginary friends from murdering everybody. I could talk about every episode of this season, but neither you nor I have the time for that. So instead, I've decided to focus on one episode. One heartbreaking, terrifying, fantastic episode. Space Patrol. In this episode, a team of astronauts land in front of the manor, and they turn out to be the group that Niles sent to space in the 50s, that he presumed were dead. In the previous episode, Dorothy killed two of Jane's personalities, the baby doll and flaming Katie. A moment that literally made my mouth drop from suspense and shock. Meanwhile, Larry is dealing with the astronauts and comes to learn that he and the negative spirit have a lot to learn when it comes to getting along. Oh yeah, Cliff and Niles go to space to find Dorothy as well. There are so many meaningful moments in this season. Larry tries to reconnect with his family. Cliff is trying his damnness to reconnect with his daughter and to be a part of her life. Jane tries to hide her problems away by trying to help Dorothy, and Niles is dying. Tensions rise in this episode and throughout this whole series but it doesn't at all feel like it's rushed, or badly paced, or anything like that, because when you get hit with a serious punch of emotions from this show, it still has time, and still gives you shots like this. The more I'm out here in the world, the more I'm sure I'm a bad person. My daughter lost her mom too, when she was young. Too young to remember much of her at all, I'm guessing. But from what I can tell, she turned out to be a really good person. The truth is, we're all struggling to figure out what kind of people we are. Jane included. She'll understand, I promise you. Sometimes a person hurts so bad, all they can imagine is that everyone wants to hurt each other. But that's not true. You're not alone. I know you want to be alone right now. But trust me, that'll pass. It always does. Or this. Thank you, Cliff. I promise I'll never ask another favor of you. Hey, for what it's worth, the kid, she's all right. She is special, isn't she? She's all right. But she deserves to be safe, happy, even after you're gone. And if that means showing up for her acting like a real family, then what the hell? I'm in. Let's go home. Or this. Don't! Don't do it. I'm primary. I'm responsible for all of us. 
and I say we have to give the Broken Ones time to mend. We don't know anything. We don't know how this happened. We don't know how this works. The one thing we do know is that there's no going back from here. This show makes my cold, cynical ass jump out of my damn seat and await the next episode to see what the fuck happened. This show deals with some pretty heavy topics, sticks to them, and yet can still have goofball ass scenes like this. What the hell are you? Baby, we're the sex men. I'm Kiss. She's torture. We're here to save the world from a paranormal sexual event. Or this. There, there! You and I, oh, oh, we don't hug enough. So where are you at the party? Look, I'm not exactly in a party mood. Do you want drugs? Chief has drugs. No, I'm sure I'd find a way to ruin that for myself, too. In this episode specifically, it goes from this calm moment of Cliff and Dorothy on the moon to Niles tossing his ass out the fucking spaceship. This show keeps things fresh, fulfilling, and fun. It balances so many tones so well, and I fucking love it. It doesn't stop the show's prog progression, progression, progression by throwing a bad joke in there. No, the joke flows with the show. Each piece of the fucking dialogue feels like what someone would say if there were a fucking Tin Man, Elastigirl, Jane, Larry, or Niles. Can we take a minute and talk about the amazing, fantastic, goddamn perfect storytelling of Jeremy Carver, Bob Hanley, Arnold Drake, and the many wonderful people on this show? With works like Frequency and Supernatural, John Carter and the amazing writers know what they are talking about. What people want to see. What we want to see. Doom Patrol is my favorite DC movie since... No. No. This. Every character, line, plot, hell, even joke works. I was fully invested in this story and I loved every damn minute of it. From the heartbreak to the fucking parody of the Ghostbusters, this show had me grinning like a goddamn goose. A quote taken from one of my favorite YouTubers, filmmakers, slash reviewers, High Top Fucking Films. Peter going to the campus doctor to see what's wrong with his spider ass. I live for these moments, I really do. I like to think that the test of a good cape flick is to ask yourself, if I take out the grand action scenes, does the movie still work? Is it still entertaining? Is the character drama enough to carry the film? The answer in this case is, fuck yeah it is. Doom Patrol puts all these tones, emotions, and character arcs together to tell an amazing story for each damn character. We learn more and more about these characters as the series goes on. We learn about the first of Jane's personalities. We learn that Cliff's daughter is pregnant and is getting married. We learn that Rita does have the strength, motivation, and dedication to get a role herself. This show does better at making me care about this band of misfits way more than the film version of Justice League. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I care more about these band of misfits than I do the DCEU's version of Batman. In the movies, they made an iconic character that is loved by millions kill almost everyone he comes in contact with. Batman does not kill. He should never kill no matter what. There's a scene in Doom Patrol Season 1 where all the heroes are trying to escape the Bureau of Normalcy's experiment place. Cliff kills everyone. He feels no remorse. If anything, he feels great about what he did. And then Jane Oh walks. god. What did I do? <laughs> I'm sorry. I you don't. Compare that cliff to the cliff we have now. The empathetic, sympathetic cliff who occasionally kills rats starts to branch out. He starts accepting people as family. I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna be better. Bear Bear! You and I, oh, oh, we don't hug enough. So where are you at the party? Look, I'm not exactly in a party mood. Do you want drugs? Chief has drugs. No, I'm sure I'd find a way to ruin that for myself too. You gotta do something though, right? You can't just sit here. What do you want me to do, Cliff? Dance? Get wrecked? 
I was supposed to go to outer space. I was supposed to be a goddamn father. I couldn't do a single thing that I was supposed to do. What the hell am I supposed to do after that? Look, I get it. I totally get it. You saw your kid? It fucked you up. Mine did too. That's what kids do. They fuck up your entire life. No, they don't. We're the ones who fuck everything up. Our kids just end up paying for it. As friends. Uh, I gotta kill that motherfucker. This show has so much heart, soul, and planning put into it. I have no doubt that there isn't one frame of the show that isn't planned out, that isn't written, that isn't made to service the fans.